Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And today we're going to ask a very, very personal question that I believe that we can all take part in. And that is, am I living my destiny? That's a very, very good question. One that we should all make sure that we are living. We're asking ourselves and that we are praying about, am I living my destiny? Am I allowing the will of God to transpire in my life? Am I doing what he has called me to do, what he created me for. That's a question that will never grow old. That is a question that I believe we should visit periodically and that we should always keep in the forefront. Never assume that we are where we need to be, but always ask God, am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I alone the journey in my life that you have ordained for me? Because sometimes we can get sidetracked. We can look over across the way and think, oh, that looks good over there. I think I'll try that. Uh, I think I'll try this right here. We can sometimes get at a standstill. But if we are going to allow God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, then we must make sure that we are doing according to his will, that we are in line with our destiny for life. So ask him. Never take it for granted. Never assume. But make sure that you are in line with the Father. I am reminded of several different passages of scripture. First, one being about Joseph. Joseph, although he went through many things, was actually living his destiny. It didn't feel good. It was a lot of confusion. It was a lot of things going on, but he was literally living by God's purpose for his life. So let's take a look at the life of Joseph. How he was mistreated. You know what I mean? Sold by his brothers. First, they wanted to kill him. Let's go over to the word. Let's look at the book of Genesis. Talking about Joseph and our word today. Am I living my destiny? That is so important. Because sometimes we get up in age of our latter years. And what we should have been done the Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance. And a lot of times we know it, but we think the time is, is wrong. Uh, we are looking for the finances to be in the right place, the people to be in the right place. We're looking for everything to be in the right place, but our faith is misplaced. And so in order to live our destiny, it's not easy. We must walk by faith and not by sight. God has a purpose and he has a plan. And he executes his plan through willing vessels who will move by faith and in obedience. And so whenever you are instructed to do something by God, being led by the Holy Spirit, and you move by faith and in obedience, then yes, you are living your destiny. When we begin to look at Joseph, Joseph was mistreated from the beginning. 
verse uh, chapter 37 says and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan these are the generations of Jacob Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brethren and the lad was with the sons of Bela and with the sons of Zilpha his father's wives and Joseph brought into his father their evil report now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors and when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren they hated him yet the more and he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obsience to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obstinance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brother and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brother indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him but his father observed the servant, the saying. So here, odd dreams, yes, but God was dealing with him about his destiny. Everyone is not going to be happy with your destiny because people will remind you of your childhood. We grew up together. Uh, you're the youngest, I'm the oldest. In tradition, the eldest leads the family after the parents has passed away. But that's not always the case with God. God chooses whom he will to lead. But once again, the question is, am I living my destiny? Because with the backlash of having such a dream, an individual will want to make peace and suppress what God has called them to do. Because you don't want nobody to leave you. You want to be loved. You want to be liked. But you have to live the destiny orchestrated by God so that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 12 says, And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto them, Here am I. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dotham. And when they saw him afar off, even before they came near unto them, and conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. And so they remembered the dream that he said. The enemy knows your destiny. And so he is going to try and stop your destiny by discouraging you, by uh, trying to get you not to believe what God said that he is going to do in your life. He wants you to doubt that God could use a vessel such as you. 
one who has been discarded by family, one who was disliked, one who no one wanted to hear. You had something to say, but they didn't want to hear it. Uh, they did not accept your gifts and talents. Why? Because you know what? You, you were born and raised in the household with me. What makes you so special? How can you do this? How can you do that? We were brought up the same way. We went to the same school. As a matter of fact, I was ahead of a grade in you. My grades probably were better than yours. So how do you have these gifts and talents? How are you able to dream such dream? Because, you know, that's, that's not what we do in this family. But God has a purpose and a plan for each and every person that is born. He has something that he wants you to do. Our job is to find out what that is. And then we have to believe it by faith. We have to become how he sees us. We have to become who he called us to be. We have to learn about who he called us to be. And we need help to be who he called us to become. That's right, and we have the Holy Spirit to help us be who he called us to be. It is not easy. And so while you are dealing with your own thoughts of, I am inadequate, and why me, and oh, this is too hard, and the suffering is too much, it's for a greater cause. And it's always about the will of God. It is always about him delivering a people. That was the purpose of Moses. Moses had a hard time. Someone might say, but when he was born and, and put in the Nile, uh, the king's sister, the Pharaoh's sister, got him and took him in and took care of him. But when he came up knowledge of who he was, because he wasn't always treated well. The Pharaoh's son knew he was adopted. And he wanted all of his father's love. But his father loved Moses. His father wanted Moses to be the next Pharaoh. That wasn't his destiny. He was in fact a deliverer. He would in fact be over a nation of people. But it would not be the it would not be the Egyptians, it would be the Israelites that he would lead out of Egypt. And so although yes, the destiny was to become a leader, but not on the lineage of man, but of the lineage of God. That's why we have to ask ourselves, am I living my destiny? Are you doing what God called you to do versus what man called you to do or what even you desire to do? In some households, in some demographic areas, the parents pre-plan the lives of the children. You are groomed for succession. And you might be the chosen one that God has selected. But I have to do it according to the will of God. I have to let him mold and make me. I have to allow him to lead and guide me by the Holy Spirit. I want to live my destiny according to his plans. So let's read further. Verse 19 says, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast have devoured him, and we shall see what would become of his dreams. So they thought they were killing his dreams. They wanted to kill the dream. But when God has his hands upon you, the, the, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. When we move by faith, the gates of hell cannot prevail against God's plans. We have a choice to move by faith and not by sight. We have a choice to be obedient and move according to the will of God. And he will warn us of impending threat of the enemy. 
sometimes he might tell you to uh, not move in your predicted time and space and what you do. Don't be so predictable because the enemy is setting a trap to kill that dream, to kill that prophetic word spoken over your life. The enemy wants to kill that. But he cannot prevail against the plans of God. He cannot. God always has a remnant of people that will be obedient, that will fulfill his will. So they had a plot and they had a plan. They wanted to kill his dream. They figured if they killed him, the dream would stop. They figured that if they would kill him, the vision would not proceed. But God's plans will always prevail. His word will never return unto him void. It will accomplish that, we, that which he sent it out to do. So even if an individual decides not to follow the plans of God, God's plans will still prevail. Because he will raise up another. But here, they figured... Let me kill him and it'll kill the dream. But imagine this, that if they would have been successful in it and God raised up another one of the brethren to fulfill his will, they would have plotted against him. So that was the influence of the enemy to try and stop what God had put in place that would transpire years after And so I ask you today, are you living your destiny? Am I living my destiny? Am I? So often, period, periodically, I ask, God, am I in, am I, am I in the right place? Even when it comes to teaching and sharing, teaching in Bible study or my time to minister on Sundays, my time to share with you with the radio, my time for our teaching ministry, all of those things, my time with helping other ministries accomplish portions of their, vi their vision. Am I in line with your will? Am I following your guidelines? I want to be present if you call me to do something I want to be I want to be where I'm supposed to be it has nothing to do with the other person and my own time you know this is it's this old adage just this old thing where shepherds people move according to the leadership and if you're always late and they know that you're always late, they're going to be late. Mm -hmm. um, oh, they're they going to get there five minutes after. I'm going to get there right after them. I'm going to be late too. If you're unorganized, so are they. Mm hmm yeah all of that all of that but we have to move according to the will of God and if he tells you to be it there if it's at a certain time it don't matter if nobody else show up are you on time are you prepared are you ready to go Never allow it to be said that you didn't show up, that you were late, that you weren't prepared. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. How am I supposed to be prepared? Stop worrying about the other person. Stop saying, oh, they're going to be late, so I'm going to be late. They ain't going to show up on time, so I ain't going to show up on time. Lose that mentality. Are you living your destiny? If you have to teach... 
Sunday school, Bible study. Study to show yourself approved. Lose the mentality, oh, I ain't got to put no effort in, no studying, because they ain't going to come no way. Don't do that. Don't do that. You show up. You live your destiny. You do what God told you to do. Stop worrying about other people. Am I in line? Am I doing according to your will? Did I study what you wanted me to study? Did I give the people what you wanted me to give them? The word carries. Now here's something that I am a firm believer on. I'm going to ask him if I did what I was required to do. Because in that day, when we stand before him, when we fall short, when we don't show up on time, when we're not prepared, when we're not ready, he's not going to say, or he's not going to accept an excuse, well, I didn't show up on time. I didn't really study to give them anything because normally they don't come out. No, 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 uh -uh, no. Are you living your destiny? Living your destiny is more than about accomplishing goals and getting some money and some riches. No. When I talk about living your destiny, I'm talking about doing the will of God. Following the plans of God. Your purpose for being created. Are you living your destiny? Let's read further. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto him, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And so Reuben had a plan. Reuben said, Put him in the pit. His plan was he was going to come back and get him out of the pit. So not everybody wanted him to die. Not everybody around you wants you to be silent. Somebody has gotten a glimpse of your destiny. Now Reuben said, "Let me let let let, let me let me throw something in there. Don't don't kill him. Just put him in the pit." But those others, they wanted to kill that dream. So I want to say to you, not everyone is against you. Not everyone is against you. God has a regiment of people praying for you, interceding for you. You just have to stay focused on the assignment. Verse 23 says, And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lift up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Galad with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it that we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. So now they're going to sell him as a slave. They just didn't want the dreamer around. They thought that if he wasn't around, it was going to kill the dream. Uh-uh. No. Whatever God has in store for you is for you. Remember the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. It doesn't matter if they don't want to talk to you. You do what God told you to do. It doesn't matter if they don't like you. You do what God told you to do. It doesn't matter if they say, I don't want to listen to him or her anymore. You do what God told you to do. It doesn't matter if they don't want to see you, your gifts, your talents. It doesn't matter if they decide not to attend a conference because your name is on it. You do what God told you to do. 
They can't kill the dream. They cannot kill the will of God. Just because they distance themselves from you, it doesn't mean that God's will isn't going to be done. You know, Satan has fooled so many people into thinking because of their lack of support that you won't succeed. And I came by to tell you that's not so. As long as you are following the will of God, as long as you are being obedient unto God, his word will not return unto him void anyway. You stay focused. You stay obedient. You stay faithful. It doesn't matter if man does not support you. It's God's vision anyway. He has an audience destined for you. He has a people that he will allow you to, to say a word that is going to set them free. The yokes are going to be destroyed. Healing is going to take place. So it does not matter if those closest to you walk away, you do what God told you to do. They thought, oh, he ain't going to be around us. So this dream is going to die. It ain't going to come to pass. I ain't got to hear about his dreams no more. But we will see in the word that God was forewarning them. Joseph had a destiny. He needed to be in position for his family as well as others. So you have a purpose. You have a destiny. Don't run away from it. Move towards it with the help of the Lord. Verse 28 says, Then there passed by Midianites, merchants, and they drew and lift up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned into the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. So that tells me that once Reuben said what he wanted to do, he left his brothers behind. Because his plan was set. So he didn't know about his the further plans to sell the brother. He didn't know about any other thing orchestrated. He thought they just agreed to drop him in the pit. So that tells me that Reuben left the plot of evil. But another plot was ensnared. And so the enemy won't stop trying to get at you. He's going to keep trying. He's going to keep trying. But this right here was all orchestrated by God. Because God needed Joseph to be in Egypt. He had to go through some crisis times to get where God wanted him to be. In our life, in order to get to where God wants to be, sometimes we're going to go through a crisis. But it is because he wants to get us to a certain place for a certain people. The disconnection with his family was not totally lost. It was reconnected. But God needed to get him to a place. So be encouraged as you are going through trials and tribulations. It seems that you are separated from your family, that they have turned their back on you. But God has a purpose and a plan. He has to get you to a place so that you can help your family, so that you can cover your family. Yes, he was hurt. Yes, he was broken. But he was healed. He had gained forgiveness in his heart. The love had returned. The love of Christ had returned in his heart by faith. So while you're going through things right now and you are thinking that this one should support you because they're family, but that they're turning their back on you. That they are saying, oh, who does she think she is? Who do he think he is? Look at them and all of these things. And why would God talk to them? I know they life. I know they struggle. They're doing all of that. I need you to keep your focus on your destiny. I need you to stay in line with the will of God. I need you to ask those pertinent questions. God, am I following your will for my life? Because I know that what I am going through, it may hurt me and it may feel like hell on earth, but you have a greater plan and I want to be a part of your plan. Give me help through this. Strengthen me through this. Protect me through this. 
Love me through this. Heal me through this. Because your plan is greater. And I want to live in your destiny. We're going to pick up this tomorrow. Am I living in my destiny? But for now, have a blessed day, everyone.